next battle. Round one, fight! <laughs>
Round one. Fight. for the next battle. Fight! <laughs> <laughs> 
show you. For the next battle. Round one. Fight. <laughs>
fight. <laughs>
Round one. Fight. Fight! <laughs> for the next battle.
for the next battle. Round one, fight. <laughs> battle. Fight! <laughs> 
fight. battle. for the next battle. battle. 
Round one. Fight. <laughs> for the next battle.
Tommy going versus Rain. Okay, now, I I just want you to know. Earlier in this bracket, we saw a Reina player using a lot of 4 4 2. Against Yoshimitsu, that is a very scary thing to do. Oh, because do if tell. She goes into, if she goes into Sentai stance and does anything other than the power crush, she's dead. Flash? Like, yes. Flash will just completely nullify a lot of her Sentai stance transitions. And really, it does that for a lot of the characters in the game. Inka going with the squid mode, Tekken 7. We shall see some matchup knowledge here that you guys are gonna love. I can't wait for you guys to see it. He misses the launch punish on the high out of the demon pop, but chooses to show that he does know that there is a high there. Shows a little bit of knowledge, talking about the flash. Speeding things up here, but Castle Tommy denies the flight and jabs out to get a full combo out of it. So puts Inka all the way to the wall, and just like what you said, Tony, just like what you said, Demon falls out of there, but back to reality we go with the flash. Still got all this heat. Like, beautiful spin, but unfortunately, was able to get tracked on the end of that. That was wild right there. Inka still has plenty of life and 15 seconds remaining. Yo, the what? up forward four, the upward one, cheeky. 24 frame orbital. Oh my gosh, you got hit by the bad breath right there. And look at all of this damage. Yo, 50%. Inka is styling on Papa Tommy right now. Gets caught with the low unblockable. And she's oh. forward again. No, gets caught by the mid. He went for some cheeky Oki at the end there. Was a little bit too hasty to finish the wall standing one two string and didn't get the wall combo that they wanted, but still lots and lots of pressure right there. I'm telling you, you cannot do that move. You are not allowed to do it. But one thing that you are allowed to do is backdash. That is the thing that can actually get you a lot of victory versus those Mitsu players, which we saw right there. That electric was crispy. Taking 50% health, gone immediately. But Inka's gonna try to answer back and try to gain more health. But gets caught by the heat dash and gets a spike off the ground. Ooh, down forward one into sidestep one. He's got a lot of recoverable health. He does have the ability to take this back. He tries to go for the crouch dash too. Oh my gosh, that breath stays there super long. So I'm actually very surprised that Pestel Tommy didn't get hit by the breath aerial. And we got a suicide Harakiri. Do you feel me? Pastel Tommy stood there and looked at it, and Ika takes that first game in perfect Yoshi Mitsu fashion. I seen it. I seen it. I seen it, Tony. I felt it. It happened. <laughs> Inka taking the page out of Dude with Hoodie's book and transferring the skill and felt his soul and its caliber goes right through him and takes it with the seppuku. You know, it is really interesting that both you and King Ray Jr. both mentioned Dude with Hoodie there, because Dude with Hoodie is known as, you know, he's known as the party Yoshi of North America, but, you know, we've all got a little bit of that in us as Yoshimitsu players, as Inka showed right there. That's how Tommy goes for the Jin instead, because obviously they noticed that uh, Reyna just cannot do 442, which is just such an integral part of her move list. Ah, oh, beautiful awareness. The North Sword stance, when it goes to that sword sweep, there is another hit, hit uh, another extension afterwards. Yep, and Pastel Tommy could have launched it. It's negative 14, but uh, he went for oh. whatever was available to him, kept the pressure going, got some wall splat, got some Oki, and finished that round. Rainbow drop comes in. Oh a beautiful my keep gosh. out with that down forward too. Anka able to catch Pastel Tommy with a huge counter hit. That was great. He caught Pastel Tommy coming in. Oh, if you want to get away from Jin's down two, just spin away. It only takes 10 damage from you. Pastel tries to go for the wall jump. It spins the heat now. Inka's looking amazing, but Pastel Tommy gets the wall splat from the heat smash and gets the back one two tornado flip afterwards. 
That wall splat is so far away. There it is, not ducking the 3 1. Dragonfly 3, that's an uh -oh. uncarryable low right there. And Inka goes for the tried and true wall standing flash after the tech roll. Beautiful block out of the sweep and gets the wall setting too. Mm, all the way to the wall here with the Savage Sword, sharpening it up. That's a Demon Paw you can use versus this character. All right, goes for the Poison Wind God Fist right there and takes a little bit of extra using the mental stack. But Pastel Tommy connects with the heat engaging 442. Ah, but Inca is now in rage. Got a 20% damage buff as well as all this life. But Pastel Tommy gets the hop kick immediately and just completely takes away any opportunity because Inca went for the sword sweep at the corner. Castle Tommy is on survival point here to go up against Inca. This beautiful, beautiful gameplay of Jin is showing its dividends that this is the better, better character to go against Yoshi. As you mentioned earlier, after that 4 4 2, that flash usage has definitely decreased from Inca. Ooh, I like that. Pastel Tommy was like, I know I'm super close after Heat Engager, and thought, ah, Inca's gonna flash here. And Inca was like, no, nah, I don't feel like it. I've got another game to play with. Why would I kill myself right here? Ooh, but that's a Heat Engager and a Heat Dash that gives Inca the opportunity to get some combo here. Pastel Tommy in rage. Oh what my a base. gosh, that was a million IQ. Went for the up forward two, canceled it, and Pastel Tommy was like, I blocked that and I punished it, right? Nope. Honestly, he wasn't even at the spacing, even if Inca had left up had let up forward two rip, he couldn't have punished it anyway with that up forward two. Yo, the For defense right now by Inca though, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the defense and the offense. Nice break out of Pastel Tommy. And this could be what they wrote. It is set point versus survival point. He's not doing the no sword stance sweep. He just keeps going for the safer option. The wall standing one, two, and it's doing so well. But unfortunately, didn't choose the safe option there. Went and tried to go for the full crouch down for a four homing move. And Pastel Tommy got a launcher, got some extra on the end of it, and Inca is in some trouble. Woo! What a beautiful defense by Pastel Tommy. And we stay alive. Sends the rage to Inca. One. Two, one. Surely he wouldn't block it and kill me twice, would he? Absolutely not. See, that's the thing, though, is that for lows, Yoshimitsu doesn't have long-range good lows outside of some really slow options and or some very high-risk options. And that full crouch down forward four, you can do it from instant full crouch. You can do it very quickly to the point where most people shouldn't be able to see it. But unfortunately, Pastel Tommy smelled it, was ready to block it not once, but twice and get the W. And we got ourselves a final game. Battle. This is what we want to see. As much as I want to see my Florida boys stomp, I want to see more of these games. Round one. Fight. Hype. High octane gameplay from both of them and all of the players all around of Tekken Never Sleeps. It's been exciting for every single one. Pastel Tommy gets the 1 plus 2 grab after a counter hit as well. Spends the heat dash out of the 1 plus 2 and closes it off with a down forward 1 4. He's doing so good at waiting to see if Inka wants to flash. Gets the forward 1 plus 2 heat engager. Pastel Tommy knows that he can backdash and beat a lot of options after the Dragonfly transition there. Was able to get a big punisher on that from Phantom Pain. Big whiff punish. And he, he had enough range as well to back up and get a wall setting to full launch punish. But Inka is not phased of what has happened. He continues to even up the score. 1 to 1. SL Tommy is refusing to duck 3-1. He's refusing to duck that string that puts uh, Yoshimitsu into the Dragonfly stance right there. Oh, we went for the 10-hit combo, which leaves you in Stone Fist, which leaves you in a wall standing position. That was kind of sick, kind of godlike right there. Finally, Inka goes for the mid option after the Dragonfly transition. There we go. The flash finally comes in true fashion. You reach, I teach, Inka. 
Woo! The Woo! damage with the heat dash, and we're yes. gonna kick on through. He's on set point once again. Inca finishes it off with the alpha ender right there. That forward one plus two is nigh on guaranteed. Another one of these right here. That actually was launch punishable by Pastel Tommy, but Inca got away with it. No more heat on deck. Inca got it. Hands to give out now. Hands in the sword. Pastel Tommy spends the heat for himself. Down two. Full crash down forward. Forward. No block this time. Spends the even paw. L -O -R -K. No, you didn't do that. No, this is not the launcher that you wanted. He did an instant tornado. He should have done wall standing to one. He could have had wall carry. He could have had tornado. He could have had so much. But because of that, he didn't get the Oki that he needed. He wasn't able to finish off that round. And Pastel Tommy took advantage of that. And we're on ourselves final, final round. Final, final. Goes for the mid again. Inca is not offing up for the low. It doesn't matter how many times you duck. I'm still going for it. That move, that mid is only negative four on block. There's no reason that he shouldn't go for it. Oh my gosh, the throw. This is going to be a huge shift in momentum. Both of the characters in heat. We are dealing with some craziness. Oh, Pestle, tell me goes for the down jab after there. Very interesting. Both of them have extinguished their heat. No counter hit on the sweep. Still going on for the low. He's not ducking anymore. Tony, he's not ducking anymore. Tries to go for the whip punish on the demon paw. Demon paw again. Beautiful block in the stature kick. Remember, Tassel Tommy's got a rage. Both of them on rage now. 13 seconds remaining right there, and finally gets the 3 1 that catches. Natural combo. Pastel Tommy tries to dash in, and Inca gets the timing read. And man, if Pastel Tommy ducked any of those 3 1s in that last round, it was over. But he said, I'm not going to take this mix. I am just going to sit, I'm going to hold back. I'm going to hold the Dragonfly mix afterwards. And Inca was just like, fine, do that. You're going to guess wrong eventually. And those mids came out, which are heat engagers and heat dashes, by the way. And just, he just was like, fine, if you're not going to duck, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Incoming news. Inca just messaged our Discord. 3-1, gang gang. 3-1, <laughs> gang gang. God, what what a set. What a set. Final, final round. God is all clenched into the edge of our seats. Pretty pretty good contender there. But up next for our top eight loser side, Dr. The Jake Man versus Peeling. I feel like we're starting to see a trend here, but what's the TNS classics here? I can't stop smiling. I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't you know. stopped smiling since we got on here. What do you mean? You're right. You're right. But <laughs> that one, honestly, honestly, man, that was robbery. Inca deserved to die like a million times. <laughs> he deserved to die like a million times for doing 3-1. And Pastel Tommy was just not trying to deal with it. And that's tough. You know, if you do take the mid, 3-2, 1 plus 2, huge amount of damage. And and the Yoshi main, and we just are gonna be able to give you guys the most informative and passionate <laughs> uh, commentary, just because we love these characters so much, and because of how much we have played each other. Like, honestly, I... could we have had a better commentary duo for this top eight? Answer, no. <laughs> I have a question here. Lee on block a slide doesn't knock down anymore ah right i i know what do you know where at. this is going what, this, do you know where this is going at i do i do just so, answer it just answer it <laughs> i i wish i could tell you that i have the answer however i'm gonna tell you because you know lee hasn't been on my my list yet but you're saying lee leaves himself not aerial anymore even if he did leave himself aerial flash would be a good punish and i think lee ends up being so close to the opponent when the slide is ducked and blocked that i could say with 90 percent certainty from the games that i have watched lee 
And granted, there's not that many lead players playing right now. Shy and Fighting GM are some of the, the, ma the main two. From what I've seen, it looks to me like Flash is just going to eat that up if the read is right. I, I have a feeling as well, because what I learned as well from... I was fighting against Venerable Tay yesterday. Mm. If I'm... if Because he has an Azucena, and Azucena has a crouch grab. Mm -hmm. A crouch grab is an actual punish. Oh, right, right. So that's why I had that thought. So maybe we'll see it here. Inca with the Yoshi fighting GM with the lead. Ooh, it is covered with the spirit shield. That's plus 17 or more, depending on the situation. Fighting GM stays down, doesn't get hit by the guard break situation, but immediately gets a counter hit right back. Oh, he tried to go for an extra back two for the combo, but unfortunately drops it. But that's completely okay. That is completely okay in this situation here. But Anka gets a whip punish out of the pulse blade, 4-4-3. Four, four, Fighting GM knows to duck that string, and Inka is like, oh, we eating today. Oh, they are, they're ducking. They're ducking early now. Back 3-3. Oh, back 3-3. Three, three. He tries to go for the flash because back 3-3 three, three puts you into mist, but Fighting GM canceled it, and Inka killed himself by that flash. That panic flash. That 1 plus 2 homing is doing an absolute wonder here for Fighting GM as it becomes full launcher here. Just like what it is in Tekken 7, one of the best buffs he's got. Uh, uh, he's uh. been doing really well with down 4 2 today. Goes for the Poison Win into Flea. Gets a couple of those Manji spin kicks. Does not get the punish on the back 4, but look at all the chip damage that you take in that situation. Nice break out of the generic here for Fighting GM. Press to go for the down 4 4 4 heat. Here we go. Spun into his own death. And Fighting GM did not have the first hit, so he couldn't get a key first follow up. We're 15 seconds left in here. And unfortunately, Inca could not break that throw and gets sent down to the ground. The 1 plus 2 unable to broke and they close it off with a blazing kick. Inca gets the heat engager afterwards and still goes for the 3 2. Mid mid instead of the mid high. Gets the just frame slide, extra 5 damage. 10 frame punish Fighting here GM, for Fighting GM. Punish with wall standing two <gasps> he gets the Azuna drop, the back turn throw. You gotta love it. Ooh, you saw that that small full crouch right there, waiting to see if maybe Fighting GM was gonna panic and hop kick. He did flash again after back 3-3. Three, three. He must have some knowledge that it must be good in that situation. Launch! No! Unfortunate! Oh, no, <laughs> so you can hop kick any time in that situation. And we know that Inka didn't have it ready. Was maybe trying to low parry the third hit. Couldn't pull it out. And Fighting GM took that handily after Inka had his little frustration mm -hmm. and wasn't able to punish him there. You can that definitely feel... You can definitely feel the power there by GM, especially with all those counter hits, especially from the one plus two. There is a lot of moments that GM caught Inca just pressing, regardless of what side it was. It is one of the best homing tools that he's got, one of the best counter hit tools that he's got. And Inca's got to be really, really careful on either spinning or stepping all the way to the left. Yeah. Yeah, Inka's using a lot of the Yoshimitsu specific tools, right? Why didn't GM not really using a lot of the Hitman stance, but notice he's using the Hitman stance one, which is good to beat out a lot of these options. I don't know how Inka's gonna deal with it, especially after taking this huge combo to start off the round of game two. He got up after back four for the Oki. Gets, gets caught by the full by the full pulse blade and gets caught by the machine gun kicks and the pickup with the back 3-3. Three, three. Full 21 second perfect right there. No punish on the forward 1 plus 2 from fighting GM. Could have been maybe the a distance thing that he wasn't favorable for punishing it. Great job sidestepping in a hitman stance. He's already in heat. Inca puts himself into rage. Gets a counter hit trade for his troubles. Goes and goes for heat. Doesn't go for the Alpha Ender. Not sure what he was trying to do in running up and jabbing like that. Yep, and Fighting Jim doesn't even need to do the Acid Rain Just Frame as he was already on heat. 
No just frames needed, and he's already on set point to eliminate Inca from TNS. Gets the down forward 4 for Heat, and still putting on that amazing pressure. Again, with the 1 plus 2 counter hit. And tries to go for another wall setting 1-2 wall carry, but it doesn't matter because he ends it off with the 7 golden letters. The perfect. And yeah, convincing. Perfect 